Welcome back to another Backstage with Millionaires debate. Today, we're gonna to be debating whether or not Ola Electric is gonna be successful in their efforts to go global. To start things off, I just wanna look at companies that are Indian that have succeeded in going global. There, there aren't really that many of them, at least compared to the United States, where you literally, like, they have so much global influence, not just culturally with Hollywood and music, but also with companies that have had a global impact. And the only ones that I'm aware of that are Indian are maybe Tata is one of them, right? They have Jaguar, Land Rover. These are international brands. It wasn't made in India originally. These aren't like companies that started in India, but they've been acquired now by Tata. And so they have that global influence. I think Bajaj is another one, right? Because they're kind of the global leader when it comes to auto rickshaws. And I think they have a pretty good presence in Southeast Asia and some other parts of the world. Are you aware of any other Indian brands that have made a global impact though? So again, Another company that I can think of is in automobile, it's Royal Enfield. But again, it was not started in India. It's hard to recall Indian companies doing well in, in outside India. There's probably a few of them that we're forgetting and I'm sure people will let us know in the comments, but it's not a common thing, at least certainly not as common as it is in the United States um, or even Europe. There's a lot of brands that have gone global and have made a very big impact. And I think the reason why that doesn't happen the reason why Indian companies don't succeed when they try to go international is the same reason why international companies that are trying to enter the Indian market also struggle, right? Oftentimes you'll hear about companies that come to the Indian market, they fail, they just, they can't drum up enough interest amongst consumers. Like a good example is Harley Davidson, right? They were pretty much on the brink of shutting down and then they finally caved and they said, okay, fine, we'll do like this. I think it was a joint venture, a partnership with Hero. Right. And now it's Hero Hardly is the is the sort of company that they've set up. And I'm not sure what their sales figures are now, but I would imagine that they're at least better than they were before they did that joint venture. Right. And that's often the route. It's a joint venture. So you have like Tata Starbucks, right? Starbucks, this behemoth, unstoppable. They're in like pretty much almost every country in the world. They couldn't crack the Indian market. They just couldn't figure it out. And so they decided to do a, a joint venture, right? Same thing in the automotive space. You have Maruti Suzuki, Hero Honda. There's just a ton of these examples of companies that have tried to enter the Indian market. Jubilant Foods is another one. They basically operate a bunch of these uh, brands. Like for example, I think Popeyes, Domino's, Dunkin' Donuts, right? These are companies that could have tried to enter the Indian market on their own, but ultimately decided to go the, the JV route because that's what everybody does, right? And the Indian market is a hard market to crack. And, it, and the reason it's hard to crack is because the Indian market is just so different. Indian consumers are so different than I think consumers in a lot of other places around the world. They're not very consumeristic, right? They, they're, they're not like, it's not as much of a capitalistic mindset that people are just out there swiping their credit cards, buying stuff whenever they feel like it. Like India is a, is a savings market. People wanna save their money. Like the, the, their favorite place to put their money is in their bank account and their savings account, right? Uh, people are very conservative, very frugal. And the things that they do buy are usually Indian brands, right? And so an uh, international competitor trying to come in and convince Indians to spend their money somewhere else, usually they don't find a lot of success unless they do the right kind of marketing and the right kind of strategy. Uh, and so anyways, that all that to say is that I think Olay Electric is very much an Indian company. Yes, they did get the designs from Etergo, which is, you know, originally was based in Amsterdam. They acquired that company. But I think the, the core of the company itself is Indian. Ola, as a, a ride hailing business, was also very Indian. And they did try to go international. Didn't really work out so well for them. But anyways, I want to pull up this tweet from Bhavish Agarwal because he's actually talked about his ambitions when it comes to Ola Electric's international expansion. So he has said, by end of 2022, Nepalese consumers will join the revolution. I think N Nepali would probably be a better way, but anyways, Latin America, Southeast Asia, and European Union. Soon, world's EV transition will be led by India. So it seems pretty clear that Ola Electric does have international ambitions. They wanna be a global player. My thesis here is that they won't be, and there's a couple of reasons for that. So first of all, the success that they've seen in India doesn't translate to success abroad. This is just a general rule, typically, just because you've succeeded here doesn't mean you can succeed outside of India. The second reason is that they failed to go global in the past, um, which is, I'll get into a little bit more about that, specifically with their ride hailing business, but also I think possibly with their electric scooter business as well. And then the third point is that they seem to have failed to even go global in the last six months, which was part of their plan. And nobody seems to have noticed. I didn't find any articles about this, but again, I'll go into more detail about that. So now, you tell me why I'm wrong. So I think the fact that Indian companies haven't done very well in global markets in the past is partially true. You're right, we don't see 
many indian companies doing well in social media sector or deep tech or like other specialized manufacturing like yeah. mobile phones ai is not really there exactly consumer technology i would sorry I, i forgot to mention earlier i think saas is one space that india has actually done extremely well i I'm not right. sure like, if they're the global leader but they're they're doing quite well so saas is definitely a sector where like indians have built for the world not for india they go outside set up offices there they've seen this demand and they build there but i think automobile is a sector in automobile specifically two wheelers where companies first do well in indian market and then they expand outside right so i want to give you a data point i'm pretty sure you're going to be like surprised by that out of the top 6 companies which sell the most two wheelers in the world three are indians I, i'm i'm not from surpri- surprised because india has 1.4 billion people and it is a two wheeler market right more people own two wheelers than four wheelers how much of that success how much of those sales are happening in india versus outside of india very like good data point but i want to give you an example to prove what i'm saying so let's take bajaj for example who are who by the way are the third largest bike manufacturer in the world in the year 2020 they built or they manufactured 38 lakh bikes in total and they exported 60% of that. Oh, okay, that is impressive. So, it's like they're building in India, first testing on Indian consumers, then they are building it for the world, right? And they are present in Latin America, other Southeast Asian countries and like Middle East and all those nearby markets. And I think as we move to electric, Ola Electric is like market leader in India for months now. And now it has moved outside India, right? It has announced that it'll go to Nepal, it'll go to Italy and other uh latin america again the countries where indian automobile companies generally target and i think since it has done very well in india i'm pretty sure it's going to do well in other countries as well uh let me let me push back on that i think since it's done well in india i'm pretty sure it's going to do well in other countries as well i think that's what i want to pick apart because first we need to understand why has it done well in india and then we need to understand it is are those pieces uh of that puzzle does that translate into success in other countries i asked people on twitter what they thought about the reasons why ola electric has succeeded and there were three major points that people came back to me first of all they said number one point most people said marketing they've done a a huge amount of marketing and that's influenced people's minds right they see this beautiful scooter or you know it looks nice um they see these advertisements they see other people riding them in these ads and so they want to buy them too the second reason is brand i think we can't underestimate how just how important that is ola is absolutely a household name in india so many people are familiar with the ola brand and then the third reason is pricing so ola electric has done a great job of pricing their scooters at a price point that i think indian consumers can get behind but now i want to break these down and understand why each one of these three points doesn't necessarily translate in a global context to success. Now, we don't have the financial figures for Ola Electric at least not from FY22 and FY23. So we don't really know how much they've been spending on marketing, but I think we can kind of guess that there's a pretty large amount of marketing spend. At least they've raised half a billion dollars in 2022 and 1.2 billion dollars overall in the entire life cycle of the company so far, and I would imagine that a large amount of that. Maybe not a majority, but a large chunk has been dedicated to marketing. I know they put up hoardings at one point to advertise for their electric scooters. They've also done some really sleek video advertisements as well. Those have really enticed people to buy their electric scooters because they get to see this really sexy, beautiful vehicle that is arguably one of the nicer looking EVs in the market right now. I think most people would agree. I personally think it looks pretty great. Um and of course it was designed in Amsterdam, right? I'm not saying that sexy things can't be designed in India, but you know, they had the Amsterdam market in mind over there, so they designed it with that in mind. And just generally, I think they've built up a lot of hype around this S1 line. They they just got people into a frenzy, right? People were literally throwing money, and this is really unusual. Like this is not what Indian consumers typically do. They got people to throw money at them even before they launched the product so people were that excited and i think that's a testament to just how well bhavish agarwal understands the indian consumer psychology side of things he's been at this now since 2010 2011 when he started ola cabs now the second point here is of course the brand i think you say ola to anybody here in india and they'll instantly know what you're talking i mean maybe if you go to some remote village they won't know what you're talking about but like generally 95 or 99% of indians are familiar with Ola and when you say Ola the first thing that comes to mind is this ride hailing slash electric scooter company 
You say hola to literally anybody else in the world, and I would say 95% of them are gonna think that you're saying hello in Spanish, right? So hola does not have an international brand presence. And I think that's a very easy thing for me to kind of debunk your argument that they're gonna, they've succeeded in India, so they're gonna succeed as well abroad. And then the third point is pricing. So Ola Electric has done a great job of pricing their scooters for the Indian market. The S1 Air is priced at 1.09 lakh rupees. The S1, just the standard S1 is 1.29 lakh rupees. And then the Pro is 1.39 lakh rupees. That's, you know, it's not cheap, but it's not super expensive, right? And Indian consumers can get behind that. How have they been able to do that? It's localization, right? A lot of electric scooter companies are importing their scooters from China. A bunch of parts are coming from outside of India and then they just assemble them in India. So that ends up costing them a lot more. And there's tax on those pieces that they're importing from outside of India as well, right? So the price of the scooters goes up because of that. And then they kind of have to subsidize or like cut the cost and hope that they can sell a large amount of these to make up for that loss. Um, whereas Ole Electric, everything is local. And so they're able to make uh, these scooters at a pretty affordable price. I don't think they're losing money on the scooters, but I would imagine that they could be making a lot more if they price them higher. So to summarize, Ole Electric has three benefits here, marketing, brand awareness, and pricing. They're not gonna have those benefits outside of India. Tell me why I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, so like, I definitely agree. They have had home advantage in terms of brand, in terms of marketing, in terms of pricing. But I think you're not recognizing how significant their leadership in India is because for a company that has just started selling scooters two years ago to becoming market leader in, you know, in a sector like India's EV two wheeler, that's like pretty commendable, right? And you're right, they're going to have their challenges in the world market, but the world market is so nascent and at such an early stage right now that I don't think that's going to be a big challenge for them, right? And I want to prove my point with a real data point. So Ola has decided to enter into Nepal and Italy till now. And I want to compare the most selling scooters in those countries with Ola's most basic, that's S1. So in Italy, you have Piaggio One Active and you have Yadea G5 in Nepal. And these are their specifications compared to Ola. So you have range of 85 kilometer and 80 kilometer for Yadea G5. And for Ola S1, it's 180 kilometer on full charge. If you talk about max speed, it's 60 kilometer per hour for both of these scooters. And for Ola S1, it's 116 kilometer per hour. And if you talk about battery capacity, that also Ola S1 has better battery capacity than both of these scooters, right? Now you might say that Ola S1 is more expensive than these, right? But that's not the case. So these are the prices for Ola S1 in both of these markets. You can say it's much cheaper than the one in Italy, and it's almost the same price with Yadia G5 in Nepal. Is that adjusted for purchase power parity though? No, but that's the price in those local markets. So the price in Euro is in Italy and the other price is in Nepalese market for S1 and the, the scooter that we just mentioned. So I think that's the value offering we are talking about and both the points that you earlier mentioned, brand awareness and marketing, that's ultimately built by the value that customers see, right? So you have to spend money in the beginning on marketing. Once you are arriving in a market, you have to tell people that there's a new brand that has come up. But after that, people, it's just the word of mouth, right? It's like what Japanese companies did in the US, right? Back in early 2000s. So they provided better cars with better specifications for much cheaper price. And in less than two decades or like three decades, they are dominating US market now. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, and the entire market for EV2 wheelers is also very small. So the scooter that I mentioned earlier, Yadea, they are currently the market leader and they own the 60% market share in electric two wheelers around the world. And do you know how many electric vehicles they sold last year? Just 6 million scooters. So the entire market size is just 10 million right now, right? And Ola is already working on a facility where they're gonna produce 10 million of such scooter every year. So what I'm seeing happening here is for such price, Ola is the best option that people in most countries are, are going to have. And that's why I think it's going to succeed. Yes, I, I, I get what you're saying here. Uh, I think we're kind of looking into the future a little bit, right? 10 million scooters, like, I don't know how long it's going to take them to complete their future factory and reach that output. Um, if and when they get there, I'm sure that they're gonna, it's gonna be great, right? Either for the Indian market alone or for other markets that they enter. But I think it's also important to look at today, what's going on at the moment. Um, you had mentioned the Italian market. We've also talked a little bit about Nepal. Here's the thing, they are not present. They're, they're, they're nowhere to be found in either one of these markets, despite the fact that they've made a lot of noise about entering each one of these markets. And I think that's kind of interesting. And 
to me, it's a little bit of a red flag that no one else seems to have noticed. So I want to dive into it a little bit and understand what kinds of runs does Ole Electric have on the board at the moment when it comes to international expansion. So for Nepal specifically, they did this big launch video saying we're launching our Ole Electric scooters in the Nepali market. And they went to this expo back in 2022. And lots of people in the comments for that video, a lot of Indian people felt pretty proud that an Indian electric scooter company was entering this international market, right? People were really proud of that. And then again, Bavish tweeted about it and literally said that by the end of the year, by the end of 2022, Nepali consumers would be joining the Ola electric revolution, implying that they would be selling their scooters to those Nepali customers by the end of the year. But here's the thing. If you actually do the research, if you, if you dig into it a little bit, you'll realize that the local distributor that they've partnered with, Chaudhary Group, isn't listing Ola Electric scooters anywhere on any of their websites. You can go check this out for yourself. I'll put it on screen here for you guys to see. They do have some EVs that are listed, but none of those EVs are being made by Ola Electric. And so my guess is that Ola Electric hasn't actually started selling the S1, S1 Pro, S1 Air, whatever scooter you wanna call it, they haven't started selling those in the Nepali market just yet, despite the fact that they did say that before the end of 2022, they would be doing that. Another point that supports this uh, suspicion that I have is if you go to the Find Us map on Olay Electric's website, you can see that there are a lot of locations for service centers, experience centers, charging stations in India. There's nothing in Nepal. You don't even see the word Nepal written on that map. And I would actually encourage people as well, if you're interested in doing this little exper experiment for yourself, go on YouTube and type Ola Electric Nepal and just see what comes up. All of the results, all of the videos that you're gonna see are from eight months ago, which wouldn't be the case if Ola Electric was actually present in the Nepal market. Right? You'd see people reviewing the scooter, saying what is it like to drive the scooter through Kathmandu or something like that. All of the videos are from eight months ago when Ola Electric actually went to this expo in Kathmandu. Uh, I believe it was in November. And ever since then, there really hasn't been any content being created by people in Nepal about this. So to me, all of these clues indicate that Ola Electric has not been able to enter the Nepal market. Who knows why? Uh, you know, I'd have to ask someone at the company why they haven't been able to do that. Could be something government related. Maybe it's import tax, who knows, but it hasn't happened. And the same thing happened with Italy as well. So back in November of 2022, Bavish tweeted this out. He said that they would be showing off their scooters at the Milan motorcycle show and announced their plans to enter the key European markets in the first quarter of next year, which is the first quarter of 2023. And then, uh, of course, just like with the Nepal expansion plans, we haven't heard anything since then. And so we're now way past Q1 of 2023, and there's just no runs on the board whatsoever. And so this feels like a pattern to me. And I think, again, it, it all kind of stems from this DNA, which comes from the top, right? This is Bavish Agrawal. And yeah, when he gets up and speaks in a video, you feel inspired, you trust him. He says, we're entering this market. We're gonna go international. We're gonna be this Indian company and we're gonna lead the charge when it comes to electric from India for the world. You, you kind of, you get goosebumps, right? Listening to, to him say these things, but then you read the articles and you realize that, oh, like there's been some complaints about his leadership style and people are complaining about it being a toxic workplace. And so there's like sort of these two competing narratives that we have going on, the public facing Bhavesh Agarwal and then the actual CEO Bhavesh Agarwal. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad you mentioned Bhavesh Agarwal there. And you're right, he's the leader. You know, Buck has to stop with him. He's the leader, he has to bear what's going wrong. But I think there's a lot of unnecessary bashing that happens like to him in mainstream media and YouTube. And like, we have to understand what goes behind in building companies like Ola and Ola Electric, right? Bhavish was 25 years old when he started Ola back in 2011. And that was two years before Uber came to India. So there's no concept of organized taxi market in India, right? This is a market that's full of mafias and full of unions. So a 25 year old guy decided to taking that like head on, right? So that shows courage to me. He was fighting gundas that's still there in the DNA. I mean, yeah, that takes courage. Also with Uber, you see like Uber has a 10x more valuation, right? And they could not stop Ola in India's market. The latest figure shows that Ola still holds 59% market share and the remaining 41% is controlled by Uber. And you're right, like there's a lot of reports of toxic work culture, but that happens with any CEO of that stretcher, someone who's trying to create a market from scratch, right? We have examples of Steve Jobs in his early days. We have 
examples of Elon Musk. It's like he's doing so many things, right? He's doing 99% great things. And that 1% thing where he has shouted on someone or abused someone, every media company is just there to bash him. It's just that negativity sells more, right? On social media or internet. For me personally, Bhavish Agrawal is the guy who gets up on the stage, announces that India is going to lead the EV revolution and also working to make that happen. Okay, let's make predictions here. I'm gonna say just based on the past, based on the patterns that I've identified with the way that they go global, right? If you can call it that, they will make plenty more announcements like this. They're not gonna stop. They're not gonna make a new announcement. Like we're re-entering the Nepal market. We're re-entering the Italian market. You know, they might just quietly sort out whatever issues they're having in those markets. I'm not sure why they haven't entered them the way that they expected. They'll, they'll do that quietly. They'll make some small, like small impact, right? They might even put their employees in a WeWork. So they'll, they'll make some small runs on the board in these countries that they're saying they're entering. But I think if we look at a five-year time span, firstly, I don't think that they're going to get into all of the markets that they, that they have said specifically that they're going to Latin America, European Union, and Southeast Asia. I think maybe Southeast Asia feels likely. European Union, hard to say, maybe in a limited capacity. Latin America, I, I doubt it. Um, who knows, right? I mean, they might be successful here. They might prove me wrong. And genuinely, I hope that they do. Like, I, I really do want to see more Indian companies going global. This is something that I've, I've been saying uh, for the last couple of months. You know, like my kids that I'm going to have here in India, like they'll be partially Indian, right? And I want them when they leave India to find companies that they recognize from home and be like, hey, that's that's from my country. I feel proud. Just the same way that when I go to select City Walk in Delhi and I see Tim Hortons, it's like, oh, that's like a Canadian brand. Like I, I feel proud that this is from my country, right? Um, but my prediction is that that's not going to be the case. Ole Electric is going to struggle to go global. What about you? So I have a totally different picture. So Ola is already, Ola Electric has already announced that they'll be doing IPO this year end. So five years down the line, if I see, I think their valuation is going to be more than $50 billion, more than like 5X from now. They're already aiming $10 billion. And I see them either leading this chart, either be the most selling EV scooter in the world or like right there at the second with Yadia. So that's what my prediction is and we'll see who wins. So let us know in the comments, what's your views and who won the debate?